Councilmember Council members Knudsen? I'm here. Litz? Here. Staggers? Present. Anderson? Here. Beninga? Here. Brown? Here. Costello? Here. Jamison? Here. We have a quorum present. Heavenly Father, tonight, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the day that we've had today. And I thank you, Father, for the service that our city council people, various backgrounds, various ideas, willing to sacrifice time, uh, surely lesser than the pay, for the concern for this city, uh, a great city and great management. And I pray you'd continue. And thank you, Father, for the people who are willing to come and fill the auditoriums and uh, give advice and counsel, he, uh, sometimes desired and sometimes not, but it keeps a level balance on things. And I pray tonight that you'd bless this meeting in a very special way also. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there a uh, motion to approve the consent? I so move Knutson. Knutson moves. Second? Second, Anderson. Anderson seconds. Further comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none. All in favor of approving the consent agenda will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. The consent agenda has been approved 8-0. Is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? So moved, Benninga. Benninga moves. Is there a second? Second. Let's. Let's seconds. Further comments? Further motions? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the regular agenda will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Stagers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. The regular agenda has been approved 8-0. This is the time we set aside five minutes for public input. We just ask that you come up and give your name and uh, five minutes. Anyone wishing to address the council or public input at this time, come forward and give us your name, please. I see no one is coming forward at this time. So we will move into the regular agenda, item number 16. Conditional use permit appeal. 2009-05-07-5837 South Frontier Trail. The applicant is requesting the conditional use permit to allow for a family daycare of up to 12 children. Approved at the June 3rd, 2009 Planning Commission meeting with a split vote, five yes, three no. Uh, Mike Cooper representing Planning and Building Services. This is an application that had been submitted to the city for a family daycare, which would allow between seven and 12 children uh, this is an existing single-family residence. It's located on the north side of West 69th Street between Minnesota and Western Avenues. Lindsay Brashear is the applicant. And during the Planning Commission hearing, there were concerns expressed by some of the neighborhood residents about the proposed daycare. Uh, as the agenda indicates, it was a split vote recommending approval by the Planning Commission and we do have an appeal process within our ordinance. Uh, the neighborhood did submit a request for an appeal to the city council. And we also received a request that that appeal would be deferred for two weeks to the June, or excuse me, the July 20th city council meeting. But I will just say for you to kind of think about, um, we have three levels of daycare. A home occupation daycare would allow you to watch up to six children. And the only requirement for that is a home occupation permit. The next level, which is the 7 to 12, is the family daycare, which does require a conditional use permit. And then the larger ones are called daycare centers over 12 children. In this case, the neighborhood indicates that in addition to the concerns that they have about the use, 
that they're also pursuing the possibility of enforcing their neighborhood covenants to uh, eliminate this type of a use from starting up because it would be defined as a business under the neighborhood covenants. So if we do, or I should say if you do uh, defer this for two weeks, on the 20th, um, you would have the option of approving it and the neighborhood could still pursue the legal remedies. Um, you could recommend denial of it and the applicant would still have the ability to pursue the home occupation. That also potentially could be subject to the legal action by the neighborhood. So those are just some things that we'll have to look at over the next two-week period. But for tonight, we did receive a letter from the legal counsel for the neighborhood asking that this would be deferred till the July 20th council meeting. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to defer this matter until the meeting on July 20th. Second, Costello. Motion been made by Litz, seconded by Costello to defer item number 16 until July 20th. Further comments on the motion to defer? Not all in favor deferring item 16 to July 20th? Vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Item 16 has been deferred to July 20th, 8-0. Item 17. New 2009-2010 Retail Malt Beverage License for Azteca Mexi Mexican Restaurant, Inc. Azteca Me Mexican Restaurant to be operated at 811 South Minnesota Avenue with the Conditional Use Permit 2009-0502 being approved on 6-3 of 09 pending final inspections for health and building services. 18 new 2009 Retail Wine License for Azteca Mexican Restaurant, Inc. Azteca Mexican restaurant to be operated at 811 South Minnesota Avenue with the conditional use permit 2009-0502 being approved on 6309 pending final inspections per health and building services. 19 new 2009-2010 retail malt beverage license for the market on Phillips LLC. The market on Phillips to be operated at 204 South Phillips Avenue with the conditional use permit 2009 0510 being approved on 63009 pending final inspection per fire health and building services. 20 new 2009 retail wine license for the market on Phillips LLC. The market on Phillips to be operated at 204 South Phillips Avenue with the conditional use permit 2009 being approved on 63009 pending final inspection per fire health and building services. 21 new 2009 packaged liquor license for the market on Phillips LLC the market on Phillips to be operated at 204 South Phillips Avenue pending final inspection per fire health and building services 22 new 2009 packaged liquor license for um, Emmanuel Lieben and Leanne Beener Abyssinia to be operated at 209 South Lavelt Avenue pending final inspection per fire and health Thank you, Jamie. Lori Hogstead with the City Attorney's Office representing items 17 through 22. A couple items to note. We would like to request that item 19 be deferred to August 10th. Um, the reason being is that we have an ordinance on the agenda tonight for first reading, which is item 28, that would allow this action to actually take place. And I can explain that further when we get to that item. Um, and then also on items 20 and 21, it does say pending final inspections per fire, health, and building services. And fire left me a message today that their inspections are complete, so it would just be health and building services. And I can certainly answer questions on the other items, and then I will address item 28 when we get to that on the agenda. Questions of Lori on any items 17 through 22. Others that wish to address the council on any items from 17 to 22. Not. I'd like to approve, Castell. You want to we, and with defer. We want you want to take oh, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22. Is that the motion? Yes. Okay, that's the motion. Castello made. Is there a second? Second, Benninger. Benninger seconded. Further comments? A motion to approve 17, 18, 20, 21, and 22. No further discussion. All in favor of that motion? Vote yes. Those opposed? No. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. 
Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 17, 18, 20, er, 20 and 21, and 22 have been approved, 8 0. Item 19, is there a motion to defer that till August 10th? I shall move. Could do it. Commissioner second. moves. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconds. Further comments on the motion to defer to August 10th? Seeing in all in favor of that motion, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Lips? Yes. Stagers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item 19 has been deferred to August 10th, 8 0. Item 23. Second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a major amendment, petition number 2009 to Chapter 1545070, Plan Development Districts at North Granite Lane and West 60th Street North, amending the Prairie Hills North Plan Development District sub-area regulations. The Planning Commission recommends approval. This is a parcel of land that's approximately 3.5 acres. It is located on the northeast corner of 60th Street North and Granite Lane North. This is part of a plan development zoning district that goes back to about 1998 when the property was annexed. And at that time, we worked closely with the property owner and surrounding neighborhood uh, representatives to put together a zoning plan um, that we felt was compatible with the Flying J truck stop as well as other development around this particular area. The applicant that's uh, being uh, asked to be heard, be heard on this item tonight is Ronald Parker with CFJ Properties. And the request tonight is to amend the list of land uses that would be allowed within this planned development district to include truck wash and service facilities as an allowed use. And by adding this land use to the plan development, it would still require um, another separate public hearing with a detailed plan showing the buildings, the parking lot, the use in more detail that would go before the City Planning Commission uh, at a, another public hearing. So by acting on this tonight, it does not allow a building to actually start construction. There would be another step involved in this process. So tonight we don't have a specific building plan to show you. We only have a proposed location which would be directly east of the Flying J truck stop. Uh, the other land uses that are currently allowed in this planned development district include office, uh, daycare facilities, retail sales and trade, wholesale warehousing, car wash, hotel, motel, campground, commercial recreation facility, and on-sale alcohol establishment as an accessory use to a truck plaza restaurant. So again, the, the request tonight is to add to the list of land uses, truck wash and service. At the Planning Commission public hearing, we did not have any uh, public testimony, but recently we have been contacted by some property owners and representatives of other property within the area. Um, and they are here tonight to express concern about adding this land use. Uh, I have not personally had a chance to talk to them before tonight, but uh, we did try to get the applicant and them together just shortly before the council meeting started. So I'm not sure what the actual discussion would be tonight. But again, the Planning Commission did make a recommendation to approve this amendment to the, the Plan Development Zoning District. Questions of Mike on item number 23. Others that wish to address the council on item number 23? I'm Gary Murfield, 5505 North Castle Drive. I live up in Skyline Heights. Thank you for hearing me, Mr. Mayor and the council. Uh, Years ago, when we had arguments with Flying J and discussions and things went on, and it got put in, Flying J got to come in. And in the ensuing years after that, with 
Doc Solberg and Wendell Potratz on the things. We went before the planning and zoning thing and maybe here once. It was agreed upon that there would be no truck washes. And Wendell and Doc Solberg met with us many times over the last 10, 15 years. We've heard nothing from this. I got blindsided this morning at 10 o'clock that this was going through. I didn't even know about the last planning and zoning meeting. I've been before the, this board before on zoning issues. I had to put up four signs in all the corners. I went out and checked and it wasn't. There was three signs along Granite Avenue. Nothing out in the cornfield. If I got to follow rules, everybody follows rules. That's how I feel. But I've been picking up garbage from Flying J since they've been there. This I don't think is going to be any different. And I don't think it's proper for a car wash to, or truck wash to be there. Car wash with a gas station, don't have any problem with. I don't want a truck wash. I don't want horse manure, cow manure, pig manure, anything. And that's what's going to be there. People can say, oh, no, 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 I've heard the no-nos before, and it happens. So I would recommend to you guys to vote no on this. And I hope that you respect me on that. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, Gary? Thank you. Gary, go ahead, Dee. Yeah, may I ask you a question, please, and thank you for being here. Uh, are, when you said that there were those discussions about no car, no truck wash, uh, it, 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 was anything signed by anyone? I don't know. It's all in the city minutes and the planning and zoning minutes and all of that. They said we had to do this. It had to be a, a, a major meeting to change all this. That's why they had put these restrictions on this is because of the major meetings. Now it's down to this, you know. And I'm tired of listening to Jake breaks, too. But that's another issue. But because we get it all, and they don't like, I don't, and I don't like being blindsided. Mr. Mayor, will appreciate that. Bob. Gary, Gary, yeah. Gary, you said you said that the uh, the signs that were put up there were three of them along mm -hmm. Granite Avenue. Not they were not posted on all four corners of the property. Is that correct? That's correct. You was that just this evening that you looked at that? I or? went out there the ten o'clock this morning with Wendell Potratz. Very good. Is uh, Mike? Is there anybody here from? The business entity that. Okay, thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Others that wish to address the council on item number 23. Good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Jeff Stockard. I'm with Swap LLC, a company that uh, we've owned the property immediately to the east of the subject property since February of 2007. Uh, we are primarily hotel developers. We bought this property to put together a quality mixed-use development that would capitalize on the location. Obviously, the land was encumbered with truck uses at the time, but we saw, a more, we saw more potential for this prime location. We still believe in the potential, but strongly feel it is important that truck uses get toned down, not beefed up. At this point in time, we believe it is incumbent upon the council to ask itself if a truck wash is the highest and best use of this land given its proximity to University Center, the airport, and two major freeways. One can assume that the zoning ordinance was well thought out at the time it was adopted and that part of that thinking that was that, was that while truck washes are acceptable in this zone, perhaps Excuse me, while car washes are acceptable in this zone, truck washes perhaps are not. In 2007, when we rezoned our property from agricultural to a mix of office, multifamily, to office, multifamily, and commercial, it was done at the urging of the planning department to accommodate, in part, the Skyline residents. Our resulting zone was a commitment from us and the city to accommodate their concerns about impact of the truck stop in the neighborhood. The city planning department played a significant role in negotiating a rezone that was in the best interest of both the homeowners who felt that the truck stop hadn't lived up to its end of the bargain and what is the highest and best use potential of the property. 
With such a high profile location, does it make sense to make a special zone change consideration to allow a truck wash use that I believe everyone involved will acknowledge does absolutely nothing to enhance the neighborhood? While we have not been contacted by this developer to discuss their project, I assume it is their intent to do what they can to enhance the look of a truck wash. But can that look be enhanced to the point where everyone involved will concur that the project will indeed enhance the neighborhood? This is arguably the highest visibility piece of land remaining at that interchange. It should be noted that it's our understanding that a tr truck wash would need to get access to the truck wash via a dedication of land that we own because traffic engineering does not want the site to have access to Granite Lane directly. Apparently due to the amount of tra which is apparently due to the amount of traffic already existing. It is further our understanding that traffic engineering would prefer to have all truck wash traffic pass through our entire 26 acre parcel then turn on to Kiwanis to get access to 60th Street via the stoplight at Kiwanis and 60th. I had a meeting with traffic engineering this afternoon and they confirmed that, that they do not want a project this close to 60th to have direct access onto Granite Lane. Looking into the future, will the fact that a truck wash was approved for this very important corner result in the remaining land to be developed in the highest and best use. We have developed a number of large parcels around the country and have watched dozens more unfold where we have had no involvement. Our, ex our experience tells us that if a truck wash is the first project developed on this land, it will set the tone for the quality and type of projects to come going forward, meaning that higher and better uses, for example, banks, restaurants, etc., may very well shy away from the area. A short time before this recent economic development, we were approached by a party wishing to develop a hotel and convention center on the land. For obvious reasons, that project didn't materialize. But whether the next potential user is a hotel, a bank, or a restaurant, we believe it is safe to assume that the remaining land will not carry an enhanced perception after a truck, truck wash is built. It is our understanding that the property owners to the north of the, near, of the nearby Quality Inn and Suites have developed a plan for a high-end retail, hotel, and mixed-use project. This rezone would not enhance the front door perception of this neighborhood or of that project. Candidly, we would not have invested in our land what we did invest had there been a truck wash adjacent to it beforehand. Reality is there are dozens of acres properly zoned for a truck wash in this general vicinity of general area of the city. It does not need to be on this particular piece of property. A rejection of this application would not inflict a hardship on the developer and approval of this application will not result in an enhancement of the neighborhood. In a nutshell, approval of this application would positively affect only the truck wash development to the detriment of all surrounding properties. For these reasons, we respectfully ask this council to reject this application in the interest of what is best for this neighborhood and given the fact there is plenty of land available that is properly zoned for a truck wash. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much. Others? I'm Lloyd Solberg. I represent Redstone Development. <clears throat> I want to limit my uh, comments to not necessarily specifically a truck wash, in that, but the concept of the truck wash at that location and the traffic problems that we have. I want to uh, second the comments that were just made with respect to best possible use and the change in the value of that uh, property as a gateway to the city, which is what we are trying to do in the future. That intersection right now is a level F. It needs to be uh, improved rather than deteriorating with respect to access. We have talked a number of times uh, with the engineering firms that have, had, have done uh, traffic studies and have suggested uh, modifications that would change that. I know that in the future there is a plan for a median on 60th Street and a right in, right out only from Flying J a possibility of additional road uh, construction on the uh, west side of Flying J that would change the access. 
it is my intent to uh, bring this forward as a very important time to consider these kind of road construction uh, changes before any adjustments are made in the zoning in the particular parcel. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd. Questions? Thank you, Lloyd, very much. Others that wish to address the council on item number 23? Hello, I'm uh, Tom Odie with uh, NAI Sioux Falls Commercial. I am representing uh, Flying J and also the potential buyer of the property. I'd just like the, to address the posting of the signs. I did post those myself. Um, I put the signs in the most conspicuous location up as high as possible on our real estate signs so that anybody that's driving would not be able to miss them at all. Um, I posted a sign along the East 60th Street frontage on a large post, but I did not put one in the cornfield. Uh, if you look up in the north, in the northeast corner um, of that cornfield, if I posted a sign there, you would not see it. The corn's about you know, three feet high. So, anyway, I just want to clear up that issue regarding the posting of the signs. Questions, Tom? Thank you very much. Thank you. Others that wish to address the council on item number 23. Good evening. Um, Darren Nelson with uh, Big Rig Truck and Trailer Wash. Um, we've done, we've been with two of the biggest construction companies in Sioux Falls that have completed many, many projects in Sioux Falls, um, big projects. Um, these people will design and build this truck wash not to look like it's in the ghetto. Um, it's, it'll it look not similar to Flying J, but just as nice as the Flying J. Um, there'll be plenty of shrubs, sod, no trash. I understand what he's saying, that there's a ton of trash up there, but that trash coming from the Flying J is going to land on our property just as much as what it is his. And um, I don't like trash any more than the next guy, so our piece of property there in the corner, if this does you know, come to, will not have trash on it. It'll have berms around it, shrubs, it'll look nice. Um, there'll be no overnight truck parking, none whatsoever. Our lot's just not big enough for that. Um, there'll be no interior washing of any trailers, whether it be livestock, tankers, grain trailers, so there'll be none of that livestock smell. Um, there'll be no idling on our parking lot. It'll basically be come in, get your truck washed, and then you leave. Go to the Flying J. So we're really not going to create any more traffic than what's already there. We're just going to service the ones that are coming into the Flying J, as what the Blue Beacon does over at the Pilot. So, um, that's about all I have to say. Questions? Yes, can you say something about uh, noise level from a truck wash? Well, it's uh, the truck wash that we're going to install is going to be an automatic. So we've looked at it it's going to take probably eight to ten minutes to wash a truck and a trailer and we'll have enough parking for people outside to you're kind of be in line as you come in and automatic wash in out you'll go as for idling there's not going to be you know they're going to idle long enough to sit in the parking lot to get the truck washed and then they'll be they'll be over at the flying j so I guess what I was wondering about the, the neighbors up there at Skyline Heights, are they going to be hearing this we're, truck wash? We're on the very southeast corner of that lot, so I mean, we're as far away from those neighbors as we possibly can be. So as for idling with the berms and the shrubs that we're going to have around it, if they hear something, it's going to be pretty tough to hear over what's happening at the Flying J. So. Uh, Darren, I guess most of my experience is uh, kid growing up part of the time on the farm is that all those trailers are vented trailers. What's going to happen to the sludge when you wash those trailers and where does it go? Well, nine times out of ten, truckers, when they're done unloading that John Morrell or down at the stockyards, when you get to the top of Cliff Avenue Hill, there's a truck wash. Truck wash out, where they always get their trailers washed out. So, for a cattle trailer to come to our facility and get you know, the outside wash before they get the inside washed is I mean, they're going to stop there before they come to us. How can you uh, guarantee that? To be a good bull hauler, pig hauler, sheep hauler, when you're done hauling your load, 
it's best that you get anything that might have, you know, if you get a dead animal in there or something. Those, the cattle haulers and the bull haulers, they always wash their equipment out when they're done hauling their, their cattle. It's just good business. You know, they could, there, there could be a disease in there. There could be, you know, whichever that could end up in that trailer. So before they can get reloaded, they have to wash out. As they leave John Morell and go up to Cliff Avenue Hill, that new, which I'm sure you know within the last two or three years has been added on to. Um, they've really had a, they've made a nice facility up there for you to get your interior of your trailers washed out. So. I guess my, my concern still is, is you do have the opportunity for those trailers to leave that facility with the problems that you're talking about, with the sludge, the disease, dead animals there's, or whatever. Yeah, there's always that opportunity. But I know there's been talk of us washing the inside of those trailers out. It won't happen. That's in a different league that we don't even want to be in. But if it's a vented trailer, how do you prevent that from happening? You don't. That smell is going to be there whether they're at our place or at Flying J. Darren, thanks for being here tonight. A couple questions more traffic related. What are your projections <coughs> or estimates for how many trucks will go through this facility a day? For us to be, we need between 30 and 40 truck trailers to come through our facility to be profitable. Um, and like I said, you know, the traffic that we're picking up is going to be the traffic that is turning to go to the Flying J to pick up fuel. Um, trucks needing time off for rest. So I don't anticipate us picking up any more traffic than what's already coming there. And as you know, Sioux Falls is growing, so truck traffic in Sioux Falls is going to get bigger whether we like it or not. I mean, we can go down on South Cliff, at Cliff Avenue Hill and, and build a truck wash down there, but then you're dragging more trucks and trailers into town, too. So... I don't know your business, so are there busy times of the day for washing trucks that you're anticipating? No, not really. Um, whenever truckers come in and get fuel, probably more so in the evening than there would be as they come in to get fuel and, and have their night's sleep, probably get their truck and trailer washed. And what are the business hours for this? Our hours will be from 7 in the morning till probably 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And how much holding space do you have for trucks waiting? How many do you anticipate? We can stage as we'll have four bays. Two of them will be service and two will be wash. You can you can have two inside on the wash side. Then I would say we'd probably have up to eight sitting outside. Eight to ten sitting outside to be comfortable. And they would not be staged out in the street. They would all be on our property. Thank you. Yep. Okay. okay. Darren, I just, uh, sorry, I guess I have a sorry. question too. Um, since you also said that you were representing the Flying J too, is that correct? No. Or, no? no. Okay. Um, knowing some of the issues that happened with the Flying J up in that area, what have you done to try to alleviate some of the neighbors' concerns up there? We haven't. We haven't had have no, no chance neighborhood to talk meeting. to them? No. No. Okay. Other questions of Darren? No, thank you very much. Thanks. Others that wish to address the council? Hello, my name is Wanda Potras. I represent Pro Group. Um, I was a former representative for Dr. Solberg and, and SWAP organization. Um, I wanted to speak this evening based on my past experience on the prior two developments. Um, I do believe that we've gotten the cart before the horse here. Uh, with the other two developments, uh, we were asked specifically by the Planning Commission to present the plan and have neighborhood meetings before we even went to the Planning Commission, in which we did. And we spent a period of almost a couple of years doing that over this development. Uh, I first learned of this truck wash Thursday and uh, from my former partner, Jeff's uh, here, that spoke here earlier this evening. I just don't think that we've gone through the proper channels and we do not have the proper information. Uh, I also spoke to Don Ospas, who represents Dr. Solberg, and she has requested a plan of what this truck wash is supposed to look like. Uh, no for plan has ever been forwarded to anyone to discuss, no neighborhood meetings, and I think that's totally wrong. Thank you. Questions? No, thank you. Others? Quickly, yeah. I'm holding in my hands here a site plan um, uh, for the 
truck wash project. And uh, the previous comment said that there were there was a staging area for eight trucks. There's a staging area for four trucks shown on this plan. Secondly, I think it's really important for everybody to understand that in my meeting with the traffic engineers today, they are saying we don't want the traffic going through the Granite and 60th interchange. We want it going through the Kiwanis and 60th interchange. In order for that to happen, first of all, this property cannot get access to our property without us granting access to them because the planning, the uh, traffic department has already said they will not give access to, uh, they will not give permanent access to Granite Lane. So secondly, for all of this traffic to take place, for all these trucks to get washed, when they exit that site, they have to leave this site and pass through our entire site. We have to take the burden of those trucks passing through our site in order for them to exit the area. I think, I think that warrants consideration as well. Thank you. Thank you. Pat? Mike, um, you mentioned that this would go through, if, if it were to pass tonight, it would go through another uh, public meeting. Is that another through the Planning Commission? Yes, it's called a final development plan, which is a more specific building layout. And if the uh, neighbors objected with that, could they appeal that to the City Council? No. So this is the last chance. Yeah. The this City is Council. to allow the use, and then the final development plan is to actually approve the development layout. So this will be the last chance for the City Council to act on right. this. And, and I, I'm sorry, go ahead. If you have more comments, that's fine. Well, I was just going to say that I was involved in these previous discussions, and it seems like time flies. But yes, there was a lot of neighborhood input at the time. And uh, we spent a lot of effort to try to develop a plan that we thought was compatible. And obviously, the property is still vacant after all these years. And so when we were approached by the current applicant, our opinion was that, you know, take it forward to a public hearing, and if, if it seems to be compatible with the other neighbors, then that's something that maybe would be able to be developed. And so at the Planning Commission hearing, again, we didn't have the, the type of input that we're having tonight. So, And then can you, um, uh, do you have any insight as far as the access? We've heard the comments regarding the access, and do you have any insight on that as well? Well, again, we've, we've never actually sat down with a specific plan to go through with engineers, so... Um, we haven't had those kind of comments back from them, other than they don't want direct access onto 60th Street. Do you think it would be appropriate if we were to defer this for a while to let the parties talk a little bit more? I think that would be... What would be an appropriate timeline? Two weeks? A month? What, what kind of... Do you have, do you have uh, a month? Let's see, where is it? Yeah, what, what about... What, a month? Okay, 30 days. So that'd be August what? The first meeting in August? Monday, August 3rd. Will that be okay? Yes. I'm hearing yes. To Pat? So I would, I would move to defer it until uh, August 1st, you said, Deborah? August 3rd. 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 Okay. I'll Costello. second that motion, Knutson. Costello made a motion to defer to August 3rd, seconded by Knutson. Further comments on the motion to defer to August 3rd? Seeing none. Go ahead. Um, Mike, when that comes back to us on the third, is it possible to have some more detail in what we've received so far? Yes. It appears that you know it's pretty much a concept now versus a, a reality plan, right. if you will. And I think it'd be important if this is going to go forward to have more of that information. Yes. That's Maybe some pictures of some previous or other facilities that have been built. Also, uh, can can we uh, find out about the uh, traffic department yes. about? not going off of granite when you have trucks going into the uh, flying J off of granite I don't understand yeah we'll have this okay. will be a chance for us to get okay. a lot more input than we have for tonight yeah also Mike if I can input one more sure if you can uh, look back in the history on that too as was stated by a couple people there was some things agreed on on that property up there I'd like yes. to know if we have that Okay, we've got a motion to defer until August uh, 3rd. Uh, motion been made and seconded. Further comments? Seeing in, all in favor of deferring item 23 to August 3rd will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council Members Knutson? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Stegers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. 
Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. James? Yes. All members present voted. Item 23 has been deferred until August 3rd, 8 0. Item 24. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 4101 West Maple Street from the RS2 Residential District to the Subarea A of the Southeast Technical Institute Plan Development District, petition number 2009-0508, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This is property owned by the Sioux Falls School District. It's just over one acre in size, <laughs> and they're incorporating this into an expanded parking lot as part of the Southeast Technical Institute campus. Questions of Mike on item number 24. Others that wish to address the council on item number 24? Not. Is there a motion to approve? <laughs> Move for approval. Benninger. Benninger moves. Is there a second? Second. Let's, let's second. Further comments? I see none. So in favor of approving item 24, I'll vote yes. Those opposed, no. <laughs> Members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Item 24 has been approved 8 0. Item 25. Second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 1202 West 22nd Street from the RS2 Residential District to the subarea A of the Sanford USD Medical Center Plan Development District, petition number 2009 0506 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This is a residential property that was recently acquired by Sanford USD Medical Center, and they are incorporating this into additional parking uh, for their campus expansion. Questions of Mike on item number 25. What, what, Mike, what are we doing with this right now? Yeah. We're rezoning it for a parking lot. Can we so see the map? It's already a parking lot. Yes. Right. This is one that, at the time the parking lot was originally approved, they were still negotiating. I remember there was, there was yes. one house that was a yes. holdover last winter. Mm -hmm. okay. Further questions of Mike on item number 25? Others that wish to address the council on item number 25? Is there a motion to approve? Move for approval. Benninger. Benninger moves. Is second. Brown. Brown seconds. Further comments on the motion to approve item 25? Motion been made second. All in favor? Yes. All opposed? No. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. <laughs> yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. James? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 25 has been approved 8 0. Item 26. Second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Section 39 82 and adding Section 39 82 A, providing for rural service district lands. This is an, uh, an update of our list of properties within the Sioux Falls city limits that are eligible to be designated as a rural service district. According to state law, we can work with uh, the counties on vacant agricultural land to essentially designate that when it becomes annexed so that it continues to be taxed as ag land. And we work with the two counties to keep this property uh, list up to date we are also adding two new properties as part of this action tonight. Questions of Mike on item number 26. Others who wish to address the council? Here. Uh, Just one quick question, Mike. Yes. Can you uh, email that map? Yes. If possible? Sure. Thank you. Further questions? <coughs> Is there a motion to approve? I so move Kadutsen. Can you just move a second? A second, let's. Let's second. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. James? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 26 has been approved 8 0. Item 27. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by increasing taxicab fares. Good evening, Deborah Gajkowski, Transit Planner with the City of Sioux Falls. A few weeks ago, the council was approached by Citywide Taxi. Um, she requested a rate increase. She did come to the planning department then, and what you have before you is the requested changes to the ordinance. Uh, she would like to see, and she along with Yellow uh, Cab Company to Brent Kinsley, would like to see the drop charge change from $2.20 to $2.60. The mileage from 20 cents every tenth mile to 35 cents every one ninth mile, 
and the waiting time from 35 cents a minute to 40 cents a minute, which equates to $24 an hour. Questions of Deborah on item 27? Let's go to 28. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, by amending Chapter 5, Alcoholic Beverages. Lori Hogstead with the City Attorney's Office. Uh, in this ordinance, we have a number of changes. The majority of the changes are actually um, state law changes that were made in the recent legislative session, and so it's just incorporating those changes into our city ordinances. And we do have one amendment at the request um, of an applicant, which I'll address in just a few minutes. So to summarize, um, in Section 5-1 under definitions, we have clarified the definition for restaurants, and this is in relation to the retail liquor licenses issued for restaurants. And what the legislature changed is rather than say not more than 40% of the gross revenue must come from alcohol or alcoholic beverages, it now reads at least 60% of the gross revenue must come from the sale of food and non-alcoholic beverages. So that would be a clarification of the definition. And then under Section 5-2, we have the classifications and fees. And for the three beer licenses, or malt beverage as we call them, they've each been increased by $50. So the malt beverage went from $250 to $300. The packaged malt beverage from $150 to $200. And the packaged malt beverage in South Dakota Farm Winery went from $175 to $225. And in case you're wondering about the city's uh, revenue on that, those items, on the full liquor licenses, which there's no change on those prices, we receive and keep 100% of that money. On the beer, we keep half the money and the state gets half. So now on a malt beverage license, it used to be we would retain 125 and the state would get 125 and that would be 150 each. So just a slight increase there. Um, also we have Again, under Section 5-2.3, it talks about the on-sale restaurant liquor licenses again, and this clarifies those percentages that we also talked about under definitions. I'll go back to 5-8 in just a minute. 5-13 is in regard to Sunday sales, and the state law for a number of years has required that in order to have Sunday sales, a business must have a restaurant license issued by the state of South Dakota and the city health department. Um, that requirement has now been taken off of the Sunday sales um, request. And so we still issue and approve Sunday sales requests. However, they no longer need to have a restaurant license. And this really won't affect many. I, I believe we have maybe five um, total retail liquor that don't have Sunday sales right now. And that's not because of the restaurant restrictions. It's just that they choose not to be open on Sundays. So that shouldn't be a real big change for us, us either. 5-8 um, five five is the restrictions on issuance of malt beverage retail dealers. And um, just to put it as simply as possible, what this states is that a retail malt beverage license, which for instance is beer where you go in and buy beer by the glass, um, that you cannot combine that with a packaged liquor license. In other words, selling a gla um, bottle of, of vodka to go. And the reason, from, from my recollection, when we first started with some of these regulations on video lottery, the reason that this was in place was to prohibit package and convenience stores from having a retail malt beverage license and then placing video lottery machines in those establishments. Because at that time it was the council's intention that we not have video lottery and convenience stores that children would frequent. Um, and we just recently had an issue that came up, and it was the one that we addressed earlier tonight, the market on Phillips, whereby this business would like to have retail beer by the glass, retail wine by the glass, which is allowed, by the way, with this combination, and to be able to sell packaged liquor. And, you know, the scope of how, how businesses are run now has changed. And at the time, we didn't have the wording in there. Um, with those businesses that just have video lottery would need that restriction. But as, as time has changed and business plans have changed, now this is um, an, an idea that this business would like to do is to have all three licenses. So in short, what this change would do would be to allow this business or others that do not have video lottery to combine retail beer, 
with packaged liquor, and they can already combine retail wine with packaged liquor. Any questions, questions on this ordinance? Lori, on item number 28. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I've got, uh, is there a motion to set the hearing date for items 27 and 28 for July 13th? I so move Knutson. Knutson moves, second. Second, let's. Let's seconds. Further comments? Not all in favor of the motion to set the hearing date for July 13th for item 27 and 28? Vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameis? Yes. All members present voted. The hearing date has been set for July 13th for items 27 and 28. 29. A resolution amending the future land use map as a part of the Sioux Falls 2015 Growth Management Plan. Petition number 2009-0513 at West 69th Street and South Tallgrass Avenue to reallocate single-family residential, multi-family residential, office, and commercial future land uses. This is a parcel of land that's about 190 acres in size. The petitioner is Jason Benson representing Bentwin Place Incorporated. This property was approved <laughs> for a land use uh, plan a number of years ago prior to the Sanford um, Research Park announcement. And with the change in future land use to the west of this property, we've been working with the property owners on revising their layout to make it more compatible with, with future development. So essentially the land use amendment that's being requested tonight would decrease the amount of single family residential by 24 acres. It would decrease the amount of recreation conservation by two acres. It would increase multifamily residential by 16 acres and increase office by nine acres and commercial by one acre. So there's a net change of 26 acres between single family recreation and changing it to multifamily office commercial. Questions of Mike on item number 29. Yes, Mike, the uh, parks, um, is the city gonna put a park in there? We've been working with the applicant. Uh, some of this will be drained. Uh -huh. Uh, open space, some of it will be for, for public use. So we're, we've been working with them on a long-range plan for that. So then we would be probably buying this drainage space and then using it also for park? Um, it would, hopefully it would be a combination of recreation and drainage purposes, yes. So we would purchase it or are we going to have them donate it? There would be a, both situations. Typically, the major drainage ways are required to be dedicated to the city. Mm -hmm. Further questions, Mike, on item 29? Others that wish to address the council on item 29? Is there a motion to approve? Move for approval. Move for approval. Jameson, is there a second? Second, Benninger. Benninger seconds. Further comments? I see none. So all in favor, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 29 has been approved seven yes and one excused. Item 30. A resolution designating the official newspaper for the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Mayor, if I may, this is an annual resolution that is required by state law where the city designates our official newspaper, uh, which for the oncoming year we will begin to publish all of our legal requirements, whether it's notice or minutes or ordinances. Um, just a note that with state law changing uh, as of July 1, that now that uh, the Argus Leader, which is who we're designating tonight as our official newspaper, uh, will require to put with each legal publication uh, the cost of, the, of that publication so um, um, so we'll kind of know down the road how much we're spending. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions? Deborah, how much, just so the public knows, what do we spend on publications each year? Uh, you know, it's at, right under $100,000 a year. Thank you. Thanks. Further questions? Move to approve. Brown. Brown moves. Is I second, second the motion. Knudsen. 
Here's the seconds. All in favor of designating the Argus as the official newspaper, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Litz? No. Steggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted seven yes and one no. Item 30 has been approved. Item 31. A resolution advising and giving consent to the appointment of members to certain citizen boards. This is um, some vacancies that we had that we had to fill, and, and some of them, like the Board of Health and, and the Orfilm, they have to be people that represent those, those two communities, and so that's basically what it is. Further questions, or? Mayor, may they, since there are just a few names, could they just be shared, please? Lee Vandywall for the Board of Adjustment to replace Scott Helming. Kathleen Larson for Board of Health, Community Health Center Board to replace Judy Jensen. Robert J. Fitzsimmons for the Orpheum Theater Advisory Board of Directors to replace Kim Bartling. I make a motion to approve Knutson. Knutson makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Let's, let's second. For the comments. Seeing none, all in favor of approving item number 31. We'll vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item 31 has been approved 8 0. Item 32. A resolution to approve two historical markers on city property. The Minnehaha County Historical Society has for a number of years been placing historic markers throughout the city and actually throughout the county. Tonight we have two requests coming from the Historical Society which have been recommended for approval by the Board of Preservation as well as the Parks and Recreation Board. The first one is called Divorce Capital which is proposed to be located at 5th Street right away near the Multicultural Center on Main Avenue. And we have a, a copy of the text, which was written primarily by Bruce Blake, which indicates that this was a significant um, event as far as the history of Sioux Falls. The second one is called Mr. Soccer, uh, recognizing former city employee Manfred Shamite, who was instrumental in getting our soccer program started a number of years ago. And this one will be placed in Yankton Trail Park. And both of these are being uh, done through donated funds. Questions of Mike on item number 32. Others that wish to address? Go ahead. I, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go take your I'm sure we have the same question. Why do we have the historical marker for the divorce capital? I mean, that is about as negative as anything that I would like to see. And then printed and put in a plaque doesn't make much sense to me. You know, I don't know that I can speak uh, completely to defend that one, but it is part of the history of Sioux Falls. And the one that we'd like to forget? or <laughs> the, the County Historical Society thought it was significant to recognize. It was a historic. It's, it was really historical yeah. in all the in all the history. Mm -hmm. History, Kermit will know that. It's, it's, it's really it's really prominent. Yeah. For a while, that had a huge economic impact. Yeah, it really it was. It was really good for the economy. They built houses and stayed here, and there were some uh, wealthier people. <laughs> Mine was actually a comment on the other one, and, and Mike, you would have worked with him, but Manfred Shaw might I got to meet as a reporter, and he was a great character for uh, Sioux Falls and, and a good public servant for the city of Sioux Falls too. So. Uh, we should be honored to be able to honor him. And the Lions Cub Club is working on assistance with getting that implemented. Further comments on item 32? Others wish to council item 32. Is there a motion to approve? You know, you know I'd like to separate them. Second. Uh, uh, I'd like to make a... I, I actually don't want to vote on divorce capital. I think that's... Uh, I, I mean, I realize that's part of our history, but I don't want to glorify that. So, I mean, can, can we separate them? Do whatever you want. Okay, I yeah. second that motion. Okay, is it which one you want? Do you want to take? Uh, okay. Which one you want to take first? Well, take? I mean, the first one on here is, is the divorce, uh, divorce capital. capital. So let's okay. vote on that one, please. Is there a motion to approve the divorce capital? Oh, pardon me. 
Is there a motion to approve div divorce capital plan? So moved. Second. second. Round seconds. We've got a vote. No, no, shouldn't we have a vote to separate? Made second. Shouldn't we have a vote to actually separate them first before oh, okay. we vote on each mm -hmm. of them? Okay, Adam, yeah. you want to you want to take make that okay, motion? Uh, okay, to separate them. Okay, let, that's a good that's a good point. Okay, we got a motion to separate, and uh, it's been made by Costello, second by Brown. That's okay with them to do that. I think actually Knutson and Knutson made the motion. Yeah. Do you want, okay, let's do Knutson, yeah, okay. Knutson, and Benningham <laughs> mm -hmm. to separate. Okay, all in favor of the motion to separate? Vote yes. Those opposed no. So Council heard. members Knutson? Yes. Let's. Yeah. Staggers? No. Anderson? Yes. Benega? No. Brown? <laughs> I want to I want to make sure I understood that no, no. the way you said it. We're just You're just separating it at this yeah, point. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Separate. I would like to change my vote. We're yes. getting a divorce. Wait. We're, we're divorcing D. Yeah, I'm divorcing <laughs> D. I'd like to be separated from her. <laughs> <laughs> Brown? No. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. <laughs> okay. Motion prevails, so we are have separated. Now we're at the divorce capital. That's the first one. Is there a motion to approve? So move, let's. Let's move. Is there a second? Costello. Costello seconded. Further comments? All? Go ahead. I just want to go, ahead, James. I was just going to say that, you know, it is, our, it is our history. I mean, yeah, it may not be very pretty or special or spectacular, but it is our history, and I think we need to recognize it. I mean, it only seems right. And I, go ahead. And I, I would just further that uh, we're not going to make it our new slogan or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on a plaque downtown. <laughs> You know, I'd, I'd like to comment. I was up in the north end by 7th and Summit today, and there's the, the house up there that somebody had killed the maid, and they never found out who did it. And it's a little bit of tawdry history, but it is our history. And I, uh, you know, well, really, I, it, was, it was a prominent part of the history, and it brought a lot of people, it brought some people yeah. to Sioux Falls. So, you know. And, Mr. Mayor, it, it is used in tours in Sioux Falls and, and such, too, so it's, it is very well known. So we got a motion been made and seconded to a the divorce capital plaque. All in favor of that motion, vote yes. So opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? No. Litz? Yes. Stegers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? No. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members pros uh, voted. Uh, that has been approved six to two. And now we're at the next one for the soccer for Manfred. Is there a motion to approve? Let's move to approve. I'll second um, the motion. Knudsen. Knudsen seconds. To approve the soccer. Further comments? All in favor of that motion to approve? A vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. James? Yes. That one had no problem. 8 0. <laughs> We're all set now. Okay, 33. Reports of the June 22nd, 2009 and the June 29th, 2009 Notice of Transfer of Appropriations within Major Organizational Units. And that uh, takes no action. So now we're at items 34 and 35, which are the election of the City Council Chair and Vice Chair. So what I will do at this time, I will turn the Chair over to Council Member Litz for the final two Sorry. items. So maybe my last. Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, we did this last year at this time, which I'd forgotten about. I thought we did it at a for informational, but uh, here we are again at the crossroads, and we've all gotten calls from each other talking about this here and the future of this council. And uh, I just hope we make a, a, the, the right choice here tonight. I know uh, uh, at the end of it, uh, whoever prevails, it's nothing personal. It's just uh, that we all have our beliefs. It's like any other vote, and uh, we will move on. And uh, we will be fine, regardless of who gets there. Uh, so 
I, I guess I guess first I would like to kind of open it up for some general discussion on you know ideas uh, and some thoughts. I don't know if I want to go into emotions right away. Councilor Knutson. Well, first of all, I would just like to thank you for being our chairperson this year. I think you've done a very nice job, and I'd like to thank uh, Councilor Costello for being vice chair. And again. Uh, I think uh, you know all of us are very capable of doing both of these jobs uh, very easily, actually. But I think you both have done a nice job, and and both uh, really do require uh, extra amount of time from very busy schedules. So thank you both. Thanks for saying that, Dee. Appreciate that, uh, Mr. Jameson. I'd just like to second that comment. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Jameson. Uh, you know, I, I got to bring this here up. You know, uh, obviously, uh, we're coming upon an election year, which brings a lot of things to my mind about, uh, you know, obviously, we're going to have a new mayor, depending on who that is. They may have some council experience. They may not. Uh, nobody, nobody knows at this time here. But uh, uh, to have some continuity in, in going forward on this is something very important to me. And uh, I think that... Uh, the year after this will be equally as important, uh, you know, because that's when the rubber is going to hit the road and the new administration, whoever that is, is, is going to uh, be looking to uh, move forward with their agenda. Uh, so that being said, uh, you know, I, I personally, this is my personal peak here, I, and I've mentioned it, that uh, I, I do have some uh, qualms about if you're going to run for mayor, also maintaining this seat during the time. And the reason that I would say that is I, I think that uh, uh, at some point when you're in there, uh, you're going to look at what is being discussed and decide uh, would it be better for the council or would it be better for a would-be mayor uh, to have it this way or that way. Uh, that being said, uh, there's also the, the idea in my mind that if you're the council chair, uh, unless you really ignore Jonathan over there, there's times that you're going to be in the spotlight, and uh, I think that it gives somebody else that might be running for uh, the council an undue advantage. And uh, so it, it's, it's with those two thoughts of mine, and I've made myself perfectly clear to all the people that, uh, uh, that I've talked to about this matter, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be like to hear what anybody else has to say about those things, and maybe you could further my thinking on that. Councilor Knudsen. Well, I'll be happy to lead off. I'm actually not going to run for mayor. I'm giving some thought to running for the governor of Alaska, but I don't know what the residency <laughs> requirement is there. Uh, but I have to think more about that before I make a public announcement. Uh, but in all seriousness, I have great respect for everyone's views on all of, all of these topics. Uh, but um, uh, again, I, um, as I said a few weeks ago, is I don't expect anyone uh, sitting up here to abuse the uh, uh, role of chairperson or vice chair. Uh, uh, whether or not, uh, I'll say he, since I'm not running for mayor, uh, decides to run for mayor. And, uh, and so that is not a concern of mine. Uh, secondly, I do also believe that we have a written policy in place right now which, has, which says nothing about per, uh, people being announced candidates or, or possibly announced candidates in the future. So to me, there's no, uh, nothing uh, written. Uh, in our current policy, not that we can't change that policy if, if the, a majority wants to do that. Um, also, I'd like to say, and I don't mean this satirically at all toward, toward the topic, but I really think there are very few people in Sioux Falls that care one way or another who's chair or vice chair or even know that. Because the reason I say that very respectfully, and I felt that way when I was chairperson too or vice chair, is that, you know, outside of chairing our four o'clock informational meetings, and again, and sitting in for the mayor, but this particular mayor never misses work, so we never ever have to sit in for him. I mean, it, and we, you know, yes, the press might call on us a little bit more if we're chair or vice chair, but uh, gee, I haven't been chair for a couple of years, and you know, I still get calls. And I mean, I'm just, it's what I'm really trying to say in a respectful way when I'm getting too wordy is that. I think to most people this is a non-event, uh, and uh, and I do think, however, that um, that our current uh, vice chair has done an excellent job as vice chair, and and I'm supportive of uh, you know it's not automatic moving people up, but I I just don't I'm respectful of your concerns. I just don't share them at all. Uh, Councilor Knudsen, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, shoot a moose while hand gliding? I'm sorry, what did you say? Can you shoot a moose while you're hand gliding? Yeah. You may want a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> I won't even go there on that one. Okay. 
Thank you for helping me, though. Mr. Chair. Mr. Brown, I would respectfully like to move to nominate you, Bob Litz, to serve another term as chair. Got a motion on the floor. And, and I would like to second. Mr. Stagger, second? Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. And I would like to uh, nominate um, Pat Costello or Chairman Costello for uh, chair of the city council. Very good. Looking for second, a second. Benninga. Second for Benninga. Well, we're at the crossroads here. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Staggers. Well, I guess I have a question for both of the nominees, uh, beginning with you, Bob, and then also with Pat. Um, Bob, at this time, do you anticipate running for mayor? Absolutely not. Pat? I have not made that decision yet. And then a second question uh, for Bob and also, well, beginning with Pat and then with Bob. Uh, if you uh, do uh, decide to run for mayor, uh, do you anticipate continuing on as the chair if you're selected tonight, or will you resign? I would say that if that uh, crossroads came down, that I would follow the wishes of the majority of the council at that time. So if the majority of the council uh, would wish that I would resign, I certainly would. Uh, I've got a question for the clerks. Were you done, Mr. Staggers? I was going to ask you the same question, sure. Bob. If, would would, would I resign might, in, in case, case you, I changed my in mind? In case you changed your mind. <laughs> yes, I, I, would, I, would, I would have to follow my own logic there, yes. I have a question for the city clerks. Uh, has, is this unprecedented, uh, this situation that we're talking about right here? Has there a, ever been a procedure here? How would we go about doing that? Uh, uh, I, well, you know, I've, I've been here since about 2006, but I... I in terms of nominating more than one chair, you've done that in the past. In fact, that is why there's a provision now in the resolution where if you, if you tie the vote three times, we determine the chair by, or the vice chair by a, a coin toss. Um, so there has been um, at least several times that I'm aware of that there has been more than one nominee for chair. No, that was not my question, Deborah. My question was, was for somebody, if they announce their intentions, for them to resign and for the process to begin again. But that was my question. I am not aware. Actually, the resolution doesn't uh, address whether you would resign or not. Um, usually it's the term uh, that continues on until next year. Um, and I don't believe it's ever been, anybody's ever resigned when they have been chair. But I don't know. Maybe Dee or Benega could, yeah. or Kermit could well, share. Yes, uh, we had uh, Andy Howes that, uh, well, he, yeah, he did not also. continue. Right. Uh, for a second term as on the city council, but at the time he was the chair. And so uh, the term goes to July, but right. he was out in May, so we had to have, was it? Brown okay. stepped in, I believe, because yes. he was vice chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a little different, but yes, he, he wasn't able to finish his term because mm -hmm. he wasn't on the council. Mr. Brown, did you have your hand up? I did. I, just procedurally, Deborah, do we, I think we'd vote on the first motion, correct? You know, my recollection is, will help me out, my recollection is that you vote in the affirmative for the, for the nominee that you choose all at once. Okay. Is that, is that, does anybody else have any comments here? No, I, I suggest, you know, we just vote. And again, I, I, I have full faith in everyone up here for well, handling the job. But. He said, let's get it on, man. Yeah. Yeah. We, well, yeah, I mean, might as well. Okay, so uh, how do I uh, handle let's, the first nomination first? or Let's have okay. uh, Jamie, Jamie will call the roll of all, and you'll just yeah. vote for the, for the nominee of your choice. And if it's a tie, we'll have to do it again. Council members Knudsen? Costello. Councilor Costello. Council members Litz? Uh, go for Bob. Staggers? Bob Litz. Anderson? Costello. Benega? Costello. Brown? Bob Litz. Costello? Me. <laughs> Jameson? Just keeping score here. Do I have three for Pat, four for Bob? You have three for Bob, four for Costello. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Pat. I vote for Pat. Okay. Well, can I safe to announce the new chair then? 
is Mr. Uh, Mr. Pat Costello. Congratulations, co-chair. Got it. Uh, now we're going to move on to the second order of business, number 35, and uh, that will be the election of the city council vice chair. And we're looking for nominations. Mr. Benningham. Mr. Litz, I would, uh, again, appreciate all your efforts and your time and dedication to the chair position. As stated before, I would like to uh, nominate Greg Jamison as vice chair. Uh, he has shown leadership skills bringing together businesses and the construction industry and the development groups and the uh, chamber and discussing a, a, a leadership uh, position to take in far, as far as the stimulus with the economy. I believe he's got the business experience and the uh, time commitment to make that happen. I'll second that motion, Knutson. It's quite an endorsement. I thought about that all day. Are there any other nominations from the floor? We don't have any other nominations. Does he win by default then, or should we go through with the should vote? vote? We should okay. vote. Very good. Council Members Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameis? Yes, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, does that conclude our business here? Motion for, to adjourn. Do you want a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Uh, okay, Knutson? I wasn't sure if I was yes. supposed to do that. Or... You're the, yeah, you're well, you're the new chair. I think you take over right away. It says immediate. Motion to a second. Second. Okay. Call the roll. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Or do I have to? Or do you have to?